Right, good afternoon, everybody, members, officers, and members of the public. Um, we'll make a start with uh, agenda item one, which is uh, substitutes um, and apologies of absence. Yes, Chair, we have apologies from Councillor Sweeney and Councillor Lynn is substituting for Councillor Sweeney today. And we've also received apologies from Councillor Shukat, but we have no substitute. Right, okay, thank you. Um, item two, members' interest. Uh, do any members need to declare any disclosable or pecuniary interest or any other interest they might have in relation to any of the items on today's, on today's agenda? Councillor Sweeney, uh, sorry, Councillor Baines. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, um, it's item number one. Um, first of all, I'm the ward councillor, so I may know uh, any objectors who come to speak about it. Um, and also, when the original application for the outline planning came to this, um, I uh, was, uh, well, I actually supported the, the outline principle of development here. Um, but I've come to this meeting, it's a different proposal now, it's more detailed and much further advanced. I think it's about 10 years since I've actually supported it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I have no, uh, you know, I haven't, I've come here with a totally open mind on this application. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Baines. Um, item three, admission to the public. Um, there is no exempt items on today's agenda, um, so we're all okay for, for the members of the public to attend. Item four, minutes of the meeting of planning committee held on the 28th of July 2020 to be approved and corrected. Uh, oh, 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 propose them? Okay, thank you. It's proposed by Councillor Curtin. Do we have a second? Councillor Baines, thank you. Okay. Withdrawn applications. Do we have any withdrawn applications? No. None that I'm aware of, Chair. Right, okie dokie. Right. Let's make a start. So item one on today's agenda. Let me just get to the top of my screen. There we go. Is um Item 19 forward slash 00326, which is land west of Upper Lane, North Arum, and it's variation of condition one, list of approved plans on planning application 17 forward slash 00266 to allow for amendments to the external appearance of plot A on the amended plans. So is that, is that for you, Maria? It is, yes, I'm taking that one, Chair. I'll just pull the presentation off. Thank you. Can members all see that clearly? Yeah. We can. Aye, right, thank you. Can you still see that, members? Yeah, yes. fine. Yeah. Yeah, good. Thank you. All right. This is um, the chair has just stated. <laughs> this is a retrospective variation of condition application. Um, the site previously had planning permission for two dwellings. Um, this variation condition relates to the plans list. Plot A has been uh, developed on the site, Plot B hasn't, and Plot A has some differences in terms of what was actually approved at Reserve Matters stage, and this application is to consider those differences. You will see that there are 12 letters, letters of objection and also one letter of representation from Councillor Taylor. Uh, key issues that we need to just, I'll just run through you before we look at the plans and the photographs. First two, principal and of development and housing issues. Well, basically they've been set out through the approval of the uh, previous outline and reserve matters. So they still accord with those principles. 
The key matter for us to consider then with this application is the layout, design and materials. You'll see in your report on pages 10 and 12, there's quite a detailed description of what the changes would be, but just to <coughs> summarize, there is a slight increase in, um, in the floor space in terms of the floor plan, um, but there is actually no change in the height. It is the levels that have changed, which means the 0.2 meters are to do with the levels of the land. Um, in terms of, again, residential amenity, that is covered by the, um, in, in terms of all the distances, etc., that have been carefully measured within your officer's report. Sorry, I skimp, skipped impact on heritage assets. The conservation officer has been consulted and they are actually happy that in terms of the design with the larger windows, etc., it is actually a better design than previously approved. Highways were consulted again. Um, there is no difference in this application. There is still the condition um, about the um, widening of upper lane and sufficient car parking and manoeuvring space, which they're happy with. Flood and drainage, again, um, condition on the outline that's being discharged. Trees and landscaping details accepted. Um, wildlife and ecology, it is outside the wildlife cor corridor and bat alert area, but biodiversity enhancements are being conditioned um, and their details have now been supplied at cavity back boxes, which our officers find to be acceptable. Just then to go through the, um, the photographs and the plans. This is the site that we're looking at that um, obviously some of you will have seen before through the previous applications on the site. This is an aerial photograph of that site. This is the new site plan. So you can see plot A is here to the south of the screen and this is plot B. We are looking at plot A today. Plot B hasn't been developed as yet. Um, and this is the approved, uh, what you actually approved back in 2017, 2018. So again, the differences are to do with plot A. Here's the proposed elevations as built. You will see um, when I go on to the next slide, these are the larger windows that the conservation officers are much happier with now. And this was the uh, plans as, proposed, as um, approved back on the previous application. Again, proposed floor plans as built and those that were approved on the previous application. Street scene as built. And again, street scene as approved on the uh, previous application. So that's just to give you a bit of context for the differences and, and hopefully help explain some of the measurements, et cetera, set out in the report. Some photographs for you. Um, front east elevation, as I say, this is a retrospective, so we can show you pictures of what's actually there. Um, north elevation. Um, the elevation, uh, which again obviously shows you the location of plot B, where the second dwelling is going to go. View from upper lane, showing the site of plot, plot B. View south of upper lane, which obviously shows you plot, um, plot A on the right hand side. The south elevation. The site you can see on the right hand side and you can see village farm on the opposite side of upper lane. That's village farm to the east. And then you've got Darcia House to the north of the site. And Darcia House and Wesleyan Fold again to the north of the site. And, and councillors, that's the presentation, um, unless you've got any questions. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Maria. If I can come back off the screen sharing, that would be great. Thank you. OK, 
Okay. Members, any questions for uh, for officers? Councillor Lynn. Uh, do I take do I take it that this application um, for this retrospective application has no bearing um, on what is likely to happen for the second plot when if and when that is built? Mm -hmm. So this is purely relating to the 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 house which has already been built. So, so there's no there's no proposal to change any of the conditions as they relate to plot B. That that. That is correct, Councillor. This is in relation to plot A, and it is purely about the size and fenestration of plot A, nothing in relation to plot B. And as you quite rightly say, all conditions that cover the previous application that relate to plot B still stand. Councillor Baines, have you got a, a question? I'm just looking at the chat box, I've seen something from you. Well, it was more to do with, um, I wasn't quick enough to get in when the screen first came up. Again, it is half the screen is covering it. Oh. You know, you've got two slides and it's very small and it's difficult to see the intricate details on the plans as they show up. You know, it's about a quarter of the screen that you see. Um, so, you know, it needs enlarging, as I said, at the last meeting as well. We can have a, we can have a look at that, can't we, as we move on, as we progress. Have a look at that for the next one. Is there any more questions for, for officers? No, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Councillor Clark. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, when we say that the level, the height of the buildings themselves has not changed, but the levels have, is, is there no way that the levels could have been lower when it was being built? You know, is that um, a deliberate thing or? I or it, or was it impossible to sort of lower the level? It is. I mean, it, it's all... it becomes very much more imposing. Uh, I mean, we are looking at 0.2 of a metre in terms of difference. Um, obviously, it's always difficult when you're working with levels. Um, we're forever um, speaking to agents about getting really good topographical surveys that come in ap with applications. But it is difficult because with most sites, until you actually go onto the land, it is very difficult to see how the levels are going to work. So I know it's no excuse, but it is, it is something that happens when you're actually building out, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Baines? Yeah, I, 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 I hear what uh, Maria is saying, but wasn't this um, the, 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 set, the current, uh, or, the, or the current permission they've got was one on um, uh, after appeal to a planning inspector? And, and that showed, allowed a, a, an increase. So overall, this is this has grown by quite a larger amount. It's not just, um, you know, 0.2 of a metre. Overall, it is actually more than that. Yeah, 1.5, I think. It, it, obviously, in terms of what we've actually permitted previously, it is just the 0.2 of the metre. And uh, obviously, we have to look at it in terms of whether that 0.2 of a metre would be enough to warrant us refusing it and potentially it going off to appeal um, and a decision being made and we've taken the view and as I say we're looking at it in the context of the previously approved scheme not obviously some of the other um, reiterations of development on this site and we feel that the 0.2 Point two of a metre is acceptable in terms of the height. Okay. Any more questions for officers before we move on to the objector? Mm. Okay. No. Okay. We have an objector who wishes to speak on this. As soon as the objector with us. Just bringing him through now, Chair. Okay. Okay. Mr. Galvin, can you can you hear us? I've just asked him to unmute. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
Mr. Good afternoon, Mr. Galvin. Good afternoon. Okay, you can hear us okay? I can. Right, fantastic. Mr. Galvin, you have five minutes uh, to put across your objections on this application. Um, what I will do when it gets to about four minutes, I will let you know you've got a minute left. Um, after the five minutes, uh, members will have the opportunity to ask you questions. Um, after that, then you will go back on to, uh, to mute again. Is that okay? Okay, that's right. fine, thank you. Bear with us one second, I'll just get a stopwatch up and then I'll give you the full time. Okay, Chair, I can do that for you. I, I've, I've got it, Susan, it's fine. All oh, right, okay, okay. fine. Right, Mr <coughs> Galvin, it's over to you. Right, thank you. Um, there's a few points in the case officer's report I'd just like to pick up on. So going back to the beginning, I think the outline was 2013. Um, and like, like many others, I don't think any, any of us actually objected to the being building of a house or two houses on the site. It was um, as would be appropriate within a conservation area and uh, within planning policies. So I, I don't think I objected to, to, to the site being developed. I've, I've objected as to what the proposals have been, which going back through the relevant proposals have been a mixture of five bedroomed properties, the one in 14, five bedrooms with dormer windows and developed windows withdrawn, the one in 15, two and a half storey, proposition of five bedrooms, partly dormers, partly developed windows, again refused for scale, mass and height and incongruous design. In 16, two and a half storey proposal of five bedrooms uh, with dormers but no developed windows, refused again, proposed dwellings would be incongruous with existing dwellings in the vicinity because of their scale, mass and particularly height. 17, um, 00266 approved as a three bedroomed property of two storeys with loft space, no dormers, no velops windows, and the aluminium curtain walling, which would reduce, in my mind, some of the loss of privacy um, to village farm. When 17 was approved, the applicant then took the opportunity of appealing the 1601215 application to the Secretary of State. Um, and I think it was on the basis that actually this is really too similar. 17, the one in 17 was only 10 centimetres lower um, than the one in 16, which was upheld on appeal. Um, Alison Partington's report refers to uh, a number of things. The one in particular being plot A would be located in close proximity to the road. Notwithstanding the fact the element of this house nearest to the road would not be as tall as the main part of the, ho the house overall, the height and position of the houses would mean they would be unduly dominant and overbearing feature in the street scene. And if my understanding of what we've now got is a building that is 0.2 higher than approved, then it's 10 centimetres higher than the one um, upheld on appeal by the Secretary of State in 16. So, you know, I just want the committee to be aware of that. The, um, the other point I would make is really the, the loss of privacy with the, with the developed windows now in the roof space, albeit presented as a loft space. You can see from um, standing outside the property through the developed window, it's already been subdivided into two rooms on that floor. So quite clearly where we are heading with this property is it is now a five bedroomed property um, on two and a half floors, which is what has been previously refused. And it just, you know, surely, albeit we might have tweaked a policy here and there, the fact of the matter is this is a five bedroom property or can be used as a five bedroomed house over two and a half storeys. Uh, and my concern, actually, my other concern was about plot B, using this as a precedent, what would be then built on plot B, which is yet to be turned um, into a development site. Um, you know, using this as a precedent, then what, given it's a retrospective, Mr. Galvin. What, yeah, what, what on earth will we now get on plot B? But as I say, my main point is this just looks and feels like one or two of the previous refused applications as confirmed 
by the Secretary of State um, Inspector Alison Partington. Okay. Finished, Chair. Right. Thank you, Mr. Galvin. Okay. Members, any questions for the, for the objector? <coughs> no. We no questions. No. no, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Galvin. Really appreciate your time speaking on this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have, I believe, Councillor Taylor. Uh, Councillor Taylor was due to speak as ward councillor, but he's not logged in for this meeting. I don't know if anyone has a statement from him at all. No, I've, I've, had, I've had nothing. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, the agent then, to the applicant, Mr. Uh, Mr. Roger Lee. I'll just swap them over. I won't be a second. Okay. Should be coming in any moment now. Okay. Uh, here we are. Mr. Lee, can you uh, hear us okay? I can, yes. Yeah, brilliant. Yep. We, can, we can see you as well. We've got you. Fantastic. Um, all right, Roger, you've got your usual five minutes. Thank you. Um, I've not really got a lot to say, to be honest. The report, I think, covers all the issues um, in terms of the changes from what was approved and the, ver the um, various measurements. Um, and I think it's been clarified about the change in the level and what the increase is as a, as a result. The residential amenity side of things is covered. Um, so really, nothing to add to what's in the report. Thanks. OK, thank you, Roger. Any questions for the, the agent? Councillor Lynn? Um, yes. We've heard some concerns expressed about what is likely to happen to plot B, given that plot A has been subject to um, alterations, which are now having to, we're now being requested to retrospectively approve. Um, I mean, we've just heard, we heard earlier on from the officer that the expectation is that the second house when built will abide by the conditions that pertained the, to the previous approval. Is, the, is, is there any reason why we should doubt that that would be the case? Thank you. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I mean, I've, I've no reason to say anything different to that i mean all i you know the reality is i get brought in when there's planning applications to submit and this is just for plot a so plot b is not being built yet it is what it is um i am not aware of any intentions to change what's approved on there okay marcus yeah i just like to say just just remind the members that the, the, the in a sense the intentions of the developer is not really planning consideration for you at this stage. You, you, you've got to sort of make a decision on the on the the, the papers before you. Mm -hmm. What he does is plot B. It'll come before you again, and you can make your determination then. So just I'll just remind members of that. Yeah. Okay. Any more? Yeah, fully agree with that. Yeah. Any more questions for the agent? Okay. No. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate that. Thanks. I don't know if um, Councillor Taylor's come in yet or not. If not, we'll have to we'll have to move on. I've just had a message regarding Councillor Taylor. Um, he isn't joining the meeting this afternoon, but he did actually make a statement, which was part of the the paperwork that was received by members anyway. So he has actually expressed his views on this application. Right. Okay. Is the statement going to be read out? It's part of it's part of the pack that was circulated. I don't know if Maria can read that out for us. Okay. The councillor is trying to get your attention as well, Chair. Sorry. Is this uh, just checking? Is this in relation? Has he uh, made additional comments since the report was put together? 
No, he said there was nothing further to add. It was just from his comments that have been submitted. So I think it um, just to read those out. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, Ward Councillor Roger Taylor has made the following comments. I have trawled through the objections and I get the issue that this is a retrospective application for work, not in line with the original plans accepted, which have already been carried out. My other observation is the application is dated the 15th of March 2019, which means my requesting a call into planning committee is out of the time scale. If not, then I would request that should permit the recommendation that the objectors be given a chance to say their piece. Okay, right. Okay, obviously we can't ask Councillor Taylor any questions, so we'll move forward to uh, any comments and Proposals, members. No comments. Any proposals on the application? We're taking a vote. Councillor Baines. Um, yeah, it's. I still have, uh, I do have some concerns about the height of, of, of this building. It is substantially more than the original thing and it's each time it goes. And uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Mr. Galvin's major concern is privacy of, over his things. And I, I know in the conditions we've, we've stated that the Velux windows in the roof spaces, um, which are we're informed are going to be used for storage areas, cannot be opened at all um, should they later be turned into living accommodation, as Mr. Gallivan referred to, with it becoming a five bedroom property. Is that, are these conditions really enforceable so that it can't do that in the future? You know, because usually, you know, I, I do tend to find that when, when something is dubious is accepted. Um, it, it becomes uh, something that we can't really enforce later on as a condition. Could I comments on that, please? Yes, Councillor. Um, I just need to point out that the condition three, um, actually you're in your paperwork, you've got some words missing from that condition, but that relates to basically removing permitted development rights for any new windows and openings and obviously, if that was to become living accommodation and there was a change, then they would have to come back and get planning approval for any of those changes. The Velux windows at the moment are very much high level windows. They are windows there to give light into the room. They are not windows that people look out of. OK. You OK with that? Councillor Baines. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair. Um, given that the levels of the floor um, were determined at a very early stage of this construction, why is that not notified and and then and then the plans change so that the, the height doesn't exceed and doesn't overwhelm? And, and this is for future. Obviously, it's for future buildings um but when when building regulations go in and have a look do they not see that it's above the yeah. level that it should be thanks councillor um as i've pointed out that one of the key things and i am looking to work with the agents on this because topographical surveys that I've seen come in with applications have not been adequate at times and I'm looking in September to actually have a forum with the agents and one of the key things we will be talking about is this levels information. As I've said to you, it's not always easy to stop this happening all the time, because when you go onto a site, it is sometimes very difficult to predict what's needed as part of the build. But certainly we are looking to see if we can do something more to stop this from happening on a regular basis. So you are right. We are picking up on this as an issue and we are looking at ways in which we can make sure we don't have 
this happen, but it is inevitable that sometimes with levels, when you actually start to build, there are some difficulties you encounter. And I think this is what has happened with this site. Thank you. Okay. Any more comments, members? If not, we'll go to the vote. Okay. Those in favour of the uh, officer's recommendations to permit. One, two, two. Those against? One, and any abstentions? One, two. So, um, right then, so we have two abstentions, two, four. Chair, are you, sorry, Chair, are, are you voting on this? Um, I suppose I can do now then, can't I? Yeah. If that's the case, then I will vote in favour of officers' recommendations to permit. Okay, so that's now carried, Marcus. That's noted. Yeah, that started. Okay, thank you. Moving on to our next item. Uh, our next application is Councillor Vane. Yeah, have, have we sorted out the presentation for this next one so we can clearly see what we're talking about instead of a minute version of it? Yeah, do you want to do you want to test that first, Maria, before we we make a start? Yeah, it's um, self-counting Yeah. I'll have a go. Right, okie dokie. Well, yeah, that's fine. Might as well leave that on, to be quite honest, rather than coming back. So this next application is 20 forward slash 00053. It's the Tower House Hotel, Master Lane, Halifax, and it's a change of use <coughs> of hotel with function room and restaurant to five four-bedroom dwellings and four three-bedroom dwellings involving partial demolition and new build. Is this yours again, Maria? This is mine, Chair. Okay, all right, clear. Right, thank you very much. So yeah, we've had um, one letter of objection and a representation from Councillor Foster, which is why the application is before you today. The key issues are as set out in the officer's report uh, with the principle of development being the presumption in favour of sustainable development, particularly having regard to Calderdale's lack of five-year housing land supply. So this is the, this is the site, it's a former hotel uh, currently unoccupied. It's within the designated primary housing area. And you can see that you've got housing here to the uh, to the east. To the west, we've got the Washer Lane Industrial Estate. Environmental Health have considered this application and uh, a noise impact assessment has been submitted. And it's determined that there would be no adverse impact upon the immunity of residents. This is the, you can see the um, access coming down into the into the site here from Master Lane. This is an existing access point uh, and there are no changes proposed to it. This is it's the aerial photo from 2009. So you can see the outline of the, the building and the existing car park and the tree boundary there on the um, southern boundary. Just provided this slide, there was there was some comment about Master Lane not being wide enough for two vehicles to pass. Uh, from my measurement, just from the aerial photos, I've got 5.2 metres uh, width here. 4.8 metres is sufficient for two vehicles to pass. So um, I would, could uh, comment on that if, if necessary, but I believe that two vehicles could pass down Master Lane. You have got this pinch point, which is also mentioned in the officer's report. So there is, but this is within the site. And uh, you'll see from later photos that there is some visibility. So you would see a car approaching 
So the risk, uh, in, in my opinion, there is the opportunity for cars to wait, but other cars to exit. This is the existing floor plan. I've just indicated in uh, red here in this dash line, this is the area of the building that is to be demolished. And the proposal is to retain the uh, previous hotel, the hotel rooms, um, and these would be converted into the three bedroom dwellings. And this is just looking at the existing elevations, again, indicating the area of building to be demolished. The building is quite attractive, but um, it's, it's lost is um, in the officer's opinion, it wouldn't have a detrimental impact on the immediate of the area. So this is the proposed site plan. So, so we've got the existing access here coming down into the site. It's a sloping access point. Some camera measures here. We come down to a, a turning head. Highways have advised that this road wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be adopted. And then for each unit, you see you've got two parking spaces on the drive. So these this terraced style dwelling here, you've got two parking spaces for unit four. Unit three has parking on the opposite side. Units two and one have one space each outside the property and then a space next next to them. There are only nine dwellings. Um, this is a, a fairly low density, but it's the site is, is constrained um, and the agent considers that no, no further dwellings could be accommodated on this site. There's a tree retained there in the centre and um, being accommodated into the parking. We've got trees retained on this south boundary here. And this is just a close up of the parking and um, spaces for units one and two. So there is space for cars to manoeuvre into those, into that area. So these are the um, proposed ground floor plans. We've just got the standard um, living arrangements, living, kitchen, dining room. The gardens for units one to four are at a higher level because the land does slope, down, slope away to the south, but you can see here they've got steps up to this raised garden area. In some cases, the gardens are not they're not substantial, but it's considered to be an adequate space for the for the residents. You can see uh, this is the first floor plan. You can see the three bedroom three bedrooms proposed for what units one to four, and then the four bedrooms are the detached unit five. The um, ground floor plan for unit six to nine. This is four bedrooms. Uh, these are the elevations, cottage style dwelling and um, converting the existing building. This is uh, unit five, which is a new dwelling, but has retained a sort of a traditional appearance. The wall in uh, material is natural stone and artificial stone proposed for the roof. This is a, a unit six to nine. Again, a, a smaller dwelling, but a traditional style appearance. Well, you've got some large projections and you've got the dormers to the rear, um, but these wouldn't be have an impact on the street scene. There are trees to be felled within the site, but these are uh, mainly conifers and not of a uh, high amenity value and the tree officer has has considered the proposal and, and raises no objections. There is an arboricultural method statement and a condition that the development shall be carried out in accordance with that to protect the trees that are to remain. This is a photograph looking up Master Lane. So you can see the width there. And then looking down towards the site. So we've got the access into the site here, and this is access to sapling Dell and Master Lane continues up up there. So this is quite a wide area, and there are some concerns about visibility and uh, risk, but uh, it's not considered to be so detrimental uh, that the adverse impact would outweigh the benefits of providing much needed housing. 
To the north of the site, there's a, a car park for some adjacent dwellings. And there's an access to the industrial estate, but that's gated and it was locked when I visit, visited the site. And that's just looking across to the industrial estate. From the uh, from within the industrial estate, you can see the west boundary. So this this is all to be demolished. But this uh, retaining wall be will be retained, and uh, the new a new dwelling constructed around this area. So looking at the existing hotel, I've taken these photos from. Um, Google Street View, I'm afraid. So you, that's why there are cars there, even though this isn't in use at the moment. So you can see the original building with the later extension that is to be retained uh, and converted into dwellings. Looking to the east, we've got Sapling Dell. There's no issues here with overlooking. Into the south boundary, you can see that these trees that are to be removed. So not, not considered to be of high immediate value. And then looking up the access drive within the site. So you can see you've got this pinch point here, but you can see through up to master lane so you can see vehicles approaching. The highway officer has um, provided some further comments on the, on the application, some, um, some further conditions. Um, so I'll just open those up and you'll be able to see those there. So they're asking for a condition requiring the parking and manoeuvring facilities to be provided prior to occupation, uh, requiring secure cycle parking, details of the construction specification, specification for the access roads, contractors, compound and staff car parking area and a scheme for the prevention of mud or other material being deposited onto the public highway. So the recommendation is to permit with conditions as stated in the officer's report and with these additional conditions recommended by highways. Thank you. Okay. 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 Members, any uh, questions? Somebody's got a question, I can hear them. Questions for officers. Councillor Baines, then Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't think I have any problems with the um, development itself. Um, it's To me, it's the, the, from what I can remember when I used to go to the um, functions at the uh, hotel, um, it's quite a steep um, road down to it. Um, and if it's not going to be adopted, I think a, a problem is going to be is how is that going to be uh, gritted in winter periods? And is that going to be a danger to the, to the people down there? Um, and I know from experience with, when sites are on an unadopted road, um, you cannot get any help from the council uh, to grit these areas. Um, and I think that is a, a, a serious problem in my opinion with the the gradient of that road uh, and it could actually lead to to accidents on it i'd like the highways opinion uh, Iowa's officer's opinion on that but please yes. well good afternoon councillors uh, hopefully you can hear me okay i'm sorry i'm not we did unfortunately you've gone off the We've lost you, Dean, unfortunately. Hello, sorry, can you hear me? Because my screen just froze then. Yeah, we can hear it again now. Okay, yeah, sorry about that, yeah. So with regards to the gradient, uh, all, although it's excessive, um, <clears throat> we would only ask for one in 10 uh, or, or higher. And it's a... Uh, We've lost you again, sorry. It's a... Uh, Oh, I'm really sorry. It's such a bad signal where I live. Um, I'll start again. The, the actual gradient is going to be less than one in ten. Um, we we can't really give give regard to the winter maintenance of a road that we aren't going to adopt. If we were to do that, it would be a never ending. So it would be down to the site management uh, to actually provide uh, either provide a bin 
which would have to be uh, maintained and filled at the resident's expense. Um, if we were to give due regard to, um, to, to such developments, it would be an undue burden on the council financially. Okay. Councillor Baines, want to come back in on that? Okay. Councillor Baines. Yeah, could, could, could that be incorporated into a condition then, um, if, at the very least? I'm not too sure, Council, that that, could be, um, that would be um, regarded as a, as a valid condition, and I, I would have to um, speak to Claire with regards to that. Um, I've certainly not put in place any conditions like that previously in my limited time with the authority. And I wouldn't think it would it, or it would be very, very difficult for us to uh, to enforce. Would that only be determined if the place was actually managed? Is that the case? Will this area be managed? Uh, Chair, um, there is, um, uh, there's no proposal within the application to uh, manage the access or the highway. But, and, and that would really be down to residents. I mean, there are, um, I think one thing in, in imposing a condition, uh, it has to, it has to be something that is, would go against, pla you know, planning policy and a condition, a condition is necessary to, to overcome that issue. And the gradient is, as the highway officer said, is, is, is acceptable. Uh, and I know that um, Council Bain's concerns about, about the ice, but I think as we've, as with many developments, it's ultimately is down to the resident to make sure that they're, uh, you know, that they are safe uh, and that they um, keep their, their roads gritted. The applicant has had the opportunity to, you know, go away and revise the scheme and, and bring it up to an adoptable standard. Uh, they don't feel that they're able to do that. Um, and, re you know, residents would have to be cognizant of that, um, or potential purchasers would have to be cognizant of that when they're purchasing the property but I think ultimately is um yeah it would be the resident's responsibility. Mm. Okay. Maria did you want to come in at this on that? It was only really to support what Claire was saying. Um, when the road's not on, uh, not adopted, it is usual practice in many cases that the residents club together to basically, um, obviously it's in their interest to make sure they're safe, their vehicles are safe. So it's usually the residents that club together and and, and you do see uh, some of the salt bins you do see around are, are actually bins that residents have, have uh, put in themselves. Yeah, yeah, I see that regular yeah. around here. Um, yeah. Councillor Hutchinson? Um, just further to that, for my own education, yeah. is it possible to insist on a long-term stewardship arrangement for sites like this um, as part of planning, or does it come in somewhere else? Because the idea of nine sets of residents all coming to a joint agreement about something can be slightly fanciful at times. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is something that we can determine at today's meeting, but it's something that would obviously need further investigation into. Right. But, but uh, Maria, if you want to, I don't know if you want to come back on that or Claire. Yeah, I mean, obviously, residents, there are management groups set up, um, sort of management associations set up on developments. To be honest, they're usually much larger developments than this. And it usually revolves around things like maintenance of open space, maintenance of drains, etc. So it does happen, but it tends to be on a much larger scale, covering a, a much more wider range of issues. Okay. Because okay. obviously there is a sorry there is obviously there there is a, a financial cost involved mm -hmm. in doing that 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 is of, often passed on to the um, people who are buying the properties and I know again from experience sometimes they wish they could just do it for themselves anyway rather than pay that premium. So, mm -hmm. Councillor Hutchinson, yeah. you want to come back in? Uh, yeah, what I really wanted to say was um, this is a you know this is a steep hillside and drainage is a very serious concern. I mean, in yesterday's, yesterday's rain, the water was just bucketing down that, down that hillside. The, um, drain, the report from the uh, Leap Flood Association was actually quite extensive on the planning portal, and there's only been an excerpt 
put into the docu the the uh, report for this meeting. But there was the comment that whenever new shared sewers are uh, required, that Yorkshire Water needs to be involved and should should be specifically invited to make a representation. And I can't find any such representation. Um, and, you know, they there really will be a need for an effective, sustainable drainage, urban drainage system um, for this for this site, if it's not going to have an impact further on on land further down in the valley. And so I, I would like to know a little bit more about the involvement of Yorkshire Water and the uh, conditions that can be applied to take into account the flood authorities' comments. Through you, Chair. Yes, um, the uh, lead local flood authority comments um, were provided after this report had been written and, and published, so that's why there's no reference um, within the report. But um, I mean, as with uh, all applications, um, you know, we do take into account drainage, but generally through a condition. There is a condition proposed um, for this application which will require the submission of details and Yorkshire Water meeting will be involved uh, can be involved at that at that stage in discussions about finding acceptable drainage I mean if, if um, they can't come up with an acceptable scheme the condition doesn't allow them to um, move forward with the development mm, okay. okay that sounds reasonable it sounds reasonable but anyone who's driven around that area will know how very narrow the roads are around there, particularly as there's a significant number of parked cars. Now, the highways officer had a lot of concerns about on-site manoeuvrability and the ability to park, park the number of cars and the number of car movements that would occur around already very congested, narrow lanes. And uh, I still, although they've said well it probably meets requirements i still have a lot of concerns we've not been able to get a view of the site itself because there's locked very high gates so you know I, i'm relying on the photographs but the on-site move, movements of vehicles do give me considerable concern i don't know if there's something for that. sorry Go on, so, yeah, so I mean, yeah, it's, it isn't an ideal situation and yes, highways have raised concerns, but these movements are at least restrained to, with, to within the site and you do find, um, you yeah. know, that people will find their way around that, uh, you know, they get used to their own, their own developments and they will, and they, you know, and as much as we try to um, condition things and put plans in place people will do what best suits them and they will find you know find out this that sort of balance um, and as I say at least it's constrained within the site so it's not having an adverse effect out on the open highway um, and affecting people um, outside the site uh, and, and, on, and with regards to this uh, the matter of balance and uh -huh. um, there is we do have to look at the, the presumption in favour of sustainable development. So, in considering um, in considering the harm, so the issues raised by highways, we do have to consider whether that adverse impact does significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits of providing housing, which there is a need for in Colvedale. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Curtin. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, just really a comment from myself regarding highways, and I understand everybody's concerns here but from my recollection when this hotel was uh, was in use and it, it and, and it had private functions there councillor baines mentioned that and in the past i've been to quite a few private functions here when i've seen the car park absolutely rammed with cars so what about all the vehicles that were coming down there using the hotel and using the private functions which must have been quite ex extensive at one time mm -hmm. okay councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair. 
I'd like, I'd like to go a bit further into um, detail. Um, the three bedroom houses, I don't think, would you want to live in one that has a car parking in front of your living room and has a, an almost vertical garden at the back? You know, it, it, is that going to be um, a retaining wall or is it going to be um, just a grassed bank? Mm -hmm. on, on, the, on the drawings, um, it sort of gives steps up to the garden. It, it, and, and I'd be very worried about um, rain, rainfall down that slope. Um, well, I, I don't, I don't think that, that that is somewhere that I would want to live. Um, yeah, I think that is something. There's no garden in front. It's, it's too crowded. Is this site? Yeah. I think. I think your comments there, Councillor Clark, taken on board, but unfortunately. That's usually down to the developer and the buyer of the property whether they want to buy it or, Quite right. or the, not. The people so. who want to buy it, yeah. Would you want to buy it? No. Maria? Yeah, just, just to add to that, councillor, obviously, you know, we have got, there are national space standards, there are our own immediacy standards, and it does meet those requirements. And obviously, some of, some of these things are very much a personal preference, as, you, as, as you've uh, spoken about. <coughs> Um, I am very concerned, though, about, about the wall, uh, about the garden at the back of these three bedroom houses. It is extremely steep. If you travel up Master Lane, uh, not Master Lane, if you travel up the drive towards Master Lane, you, you're actually looking down onto the roofs of these houses. It, 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 so if you can imagine this, the, the gradient of that garden, it, it, I don't think it, it's sustainable as, as a house garden. Okay. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No more questions for officers? Okay. We have no objector and we have no councillor representation. However, we do have the uh, the agent for the applicant, uh, Adrian Rose. Who's Adrian Rose? Mm -hmm. Okay. Adrian, you are you are on mute. If you can hear us. Okay. I've Adrian, can you uh, can you hear us clearly? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Loud and clear. Yeah. Adrian, um, you have five minutes to put across your your case, and then uh, at the end of the five minutes, obviously when it gets to four minutes, I'll let you know you've got sixty seconds left. After your five minutes. Um, members then have the opportunity to ask you questions on the application. Is that okay? That should be absolutely fine. Thank you. Um, right. Thank you. Um, the first point, I just cover the point about gritting. Um, yes, there's, there's a man when you have a common drive like this, you have a management agreement which is responsible for the maintenance of that into the future. And it's quite normal, as you know, in this area for people to to look after their own gritting. So gritting and the maintenance of the, of the private drive will be a matter for the, the management committee. So that is addressed as it is in most private developments of this type. Um, secondly, drainage, yes, the site exists. There's gonna be no more surface water drainage coming off this site than exists now. The area is already hard surfaced. Um, however, clearly the scheme will have a detailed drainage scheme which will be approved by Yorkshire Water. So drainage is not an, an issue here. Um, in terms of manoeuvrability, um, we're just very surprised at the comments because clearly um, the, the standard is a very low um, low speed area within the, around, amongst the dwellings. Um, the service area meets your standards. All the, the units have normal parking spaces of typical sizes. None of them are difficult to get into. Um, units four to nine all have pretty standard driveways with parking provision. Unit three has two dedicated parking spaces, which are more than adequate. One and two have a single space you see in front of the dwellings and also additional parking at the end of the gable. So it fully meets your parking requirements. I don't really understand any concern. It, it's a well-designed scheme. Um, in fact, the case officer was wanting us to put more houses in it because it was below your normal density standards. So we've actually hopefully had a, um, got a reasonable compromise between the constraints of the site and what you require is density. Um, I just briefly say clearly, this is a significant de-intensification of the use of that term, that road. Um, Councillor Baines correctly pointed out, 
that there was um, there were nine. Uh, this we are putting nine houses there. Previously, there were eleven rooms um, which were let out. Um, there's certainly a fifty cover restaurant. There were two function rooms which regularly had weddings and other meetings of over two hundred people, two hundred guests. So the amount of traffic which is going to come in and out of that is going to be so insignificant in relative to what's happened in the past. Um, in terms of the design that the, the, the councillor raised, clearly those gardens exist. Um, they are existing um, apartments which are rented, rooms which are rented out. Um, if you'd like to go on site, clearly it's a matter of choice of the people buying them, but there's no different from many gardens in this area which are very steep at the back of houses. That's the very nature of this area. So I hope members you'll find the development acceptable and you will follow an officer's recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Adrian. Appreciate that. Questions from uh, members to the agent? Okay, with no questions. Thank you, Adrian. I appreciate your time. Okay. Any comments, members? Okay, no comments. Any proposals? Oh, Councillor Curtin? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I've listened, listened to what's been said, uh, which um, we've debated this quite extensively. I think um, the the proposals make good use of a site that's not re, not being used as a hotel now anymore. And um, as as, the, as as Adrian mentioned, you know there was many many cars there when it was a function uh, and and a function room and a hotel. Uh, much more than they'll probably be now with, with 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 the dwellings there. So I'm quite happy to move officers' recommendations to permit, and I think it makes a good use of the site. Okay, thank you, Councillor Curtin. Councillor Baines. Yeah, with reluctance, I'll second that, but I still do have doubts about the um, the winter conditions on on you know for access on this and whether the uh, the nine residents will actually join together and sort out something. I think that is still a concern, but it, it's something that I, I don't think from what our planning or our uh, officers have told us is something that we can insist upon. So I'll be happy to second. Okay. Just another comment, if I, if I, if I may, Chair. Yes, um, I think, you know, that nine residents there, I think, you know... We've lost it's, you now. it's in the, all their interest to get together uh, to make sure that they can manoeuvre in and out of the site safely. So, can okay. you hear me now? We can hear can you. Can you hear me? I've got, I've got have you got me, ones, have you got got me back? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes. And, and, and yeah. Well, yeah, I just want to make a comment, really, just uh, sorry uh, about the uh, nine residents there. It's in their interest to make sure that they've got access and egress from the site, you know. So, I'm sure they'll come to some sort of agreement. Okay. Claire, did you want to come in? And then Marcus, sorry, as well. Yeah, just to remind um, the, the additional conditions. So um, if, you just conf if you could just confirm that that's a recommendation to permit with the additional with conditions. The conditions. Yeah. Yes. So is that with the conditions, Councillor Curtin? Uh, yes, it is, Chair. Yeah. I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Curtin. Marcus? Yeah, I just wonder, it's really just, it, I think Councillor Curtin's. He's, he's, you said the point I was going to make really it, it is in their interest to, to grip the road because ultimately they're the ones that are going to be legally liable for any accidents that they're, they're supposed to repair it and keep it and maintain it and um and ultimately um if they fail to do that the highways authority does have power to step in and uh, and remove any obstructions and, and charge them for it so it's really pretty much what councillor Curtin said okay right so we have a, a motion to go with officers' recommendations for approval with the conditions and that's seconded by Councillor Baines. Uh, do we have any more proposals? No. So those in favour of officers... Councillor Lynn? Oh, is it you in favour? Yeah. <laughs> so if that's do with it, it's all right. So those in favour of officers' recommendations to permit with the, with the conditions, uh, that's... All in favour? Okay, so that one's carried. Thank you. Right, moving on to our final application, which is 20 forward slash 00259, land at junction of Crossley Hill and Farnham Lane, Salter Rebel. 
and it is for residential development of two dwellings. Okay. Over to which officer? Claire, yours again. This is, yeah, this is one of mine. Um, so yeah, as, you, as you said, Chair, it's the residential development of two dwellings. Uh, we've had seven letters of objection and representations from councillors Hutchinson and Barnes. Um, just before um, I start my presentation uh, properly, uh, we've just got some items to read out. So we've had um, an email from um, councillor Barnes. He says, dear chair and committee members, Unfortunately, work commitments mean that I am unable to attend this meeting and I would like to thank the Chair for the opportunity for my statement to be read out. I continue to object to the proposed development on a number of grounds. Firstly, traffic, car parking. If you were to do a very quick Google search, you'll note five vehicles parked on the opposite side to the proposed development, yet there is no comment from highways regarding this nor that this area is currently being used by a combination of hospital staff and visitors as it represents the closest free parking to the hospital. The road is narrow with a blind bend with no footpath, yet as pointed out, the proposed development will be situated alongside a children's nursery. There is no accommodation for traffic egress to the site. The junction of Salter Hebel Hill and Rookery Lane does not readily cater for any large vehicle turning into Rookery Lane. It is acknowledged that this is a link road, rural in nature, yet it is felt that it is acceptable to add more traffic to a road that is not well designed for road vehicles. Second point is regarding stability. I see no evidence of a report into the stability of the site, nor how the proposed development will cater for the close proximity to Crossley Hill. I reference other problems faced in the ward when planning permission was approved without adequate evidence that the site was stable to meet said development. Next point is flooding. The site has witnessed localised flooding and the addition of our impermeable surfaces can only increase the risk of further flooding. Residential amenity. I believe that the planning comments are incorrect in that the gable end of Nine Mill Millside Way is not blank and that the development will overlook other properties, compromising privacy for current residents. In addition, I note that the recommendation is for an acoustic screen to be built due to concerns with the potential of noise dis disturbance to the proposed occupiers in relation to the existing children's nursery. This does seem about face that we are concerned over potential occupiers over and above the rights and concerns of current residents, businesses. The current remote owners of the property have failed to maintain this parcel of land, resulting in the unkempt nature of the site, but it has rather perversely resulted in the site becoming a veritable haven for wildlife. I've only listed some of my concerns on this development and would ask that committee members reject the current proposal until these issues, concerns have been adequately answered dealt with by the developers. That's from um, Councillor Barnes. We've also had some additional comments from uh, uh, members of the public, which we've also agreed to um, read out to you. Maria might come in, uh, in on this just after I've read out this section, there was some issue with regards to no neighbour notifications. So I'll just read out the comments. Principle of development, I fail to see how it has not been recognised that the considerable adverse impacts of this development made very clearly in the director's letters are not outweighed by the benefits. The only benefit appears to be that a property developer from outside the area makes a killing on a plot of land that was sold to him for a pittance by Calderdale Council at the expense of long-standing council taxpaying Calderdale residents. Although development apparently is allowed on this greenfield space, the site is totally inappropriate for housing. The officer describes the site as overgrown and unkempt. This is because the present owner has failed to maintain the site to the previous level of maintenance by Calderdale Council. It is, however, still an important part of the wildlife corridor and teeming with bird life habitats, which will be destroyed. 
how can this development with the attendant problems of visual and noise pollution, months of disruption to the local area, increased risk of flooding and ac accidents be classed as sustainable when set against the removal of green space, two weeping willow trees, wildlife and bird habitats? We are at a loss to understand how the extensive digging out of the lower part of Cross the Hill with a road running along its top edge can be classed as having no problem with stability. We also cannot understand why a very clear legal right of way from Crossley Hill to the Day Nursery does not appear to have been mentioned at all by the planning officer. This cuts through the proposed development. With regards to residential amenity, the west elevation of Nine Mills sideway is not blank as stated. One of the proposed residences will overlook the kitchen area on this elevation. All the back garden and front garden will be overlooked by the first floor of the two proposed residences, leading to a total lack of privacy for the residents. Highway considerations. Even before any new development, the present road footpath arrangement does not provide for the safe and efficient movement of pedestrians, vehicles and cyclists. And this has already been brought to the attention of the highways department. This new development will only exasperate the problems. The number of vehicles generated by the two residences is not really the issue. However, if they park on the road, it becomes almost impassable. The cars will also have to pull out onto a road on a blind bend into speeding rat run traffic. It will be an accident waiting to happen. Even to a layman, it is obvious that the sight lines will be compromised for traffic coming down Cross the Hill and joining Farrow Mill Lane. It is difficult enough even now to see the traffic flooding and draining. After heavy rain, localised flooding already takes place on Farrow Mill Lane and encroaches into the gardens of the adjacent houses. The increase of impermeable surfaces that will come with this development cannot fail to increase surface runoff. Um, wildlife conservation. If a cost-benefit survey had taken place, weighing up the loss of the natural environment and natural habitats against squeezing two detached houses onto a totally inappropriate site, what do the councils feel would have been the outcome? In conclusion, despite the fact that this proposal appears to conform, albeit sometimes tenuously to the myriad of revamped planning policies, we feel that not enough thought has been given to the unique local geography of the proposed site. It is a, diff it is a difficult slope site in an area with already existing traffic problems and will be extremely difficult to develop. Excavation of the site will inevitably lead to the closure of sections of Farrell Lane and Crossley Hill, adjoining the site. This will cause months of severe disruption to the local area and may lead to lack of access for emergency vehicles. It will certainly impact on the nearby local business relying on access. We urge that no decision is made on this proposal until all the councillors who are making the decision, decision have actually visited the site concerned. Thank you. And Marie, did you want to come in and mention about the notifications? Yeah, the, the start of the email that Claire read out, um, the, the first point I would like to make is that I only received the letter informing me about the planning committee meeting today, that was the 13th of August. According to the letter, the deadline for comments, registering and interest to speak is also today. What a nonsense. How are the objectors supposed to meet and discuss who might want to speak in such a short time frame? How is anyone supposed to draft any additional comments in such a short time span? Perhaps this can be looked into. After speaking on the phone to you, I very much appreciate the fact that you are allowing me a little more time to get some additional comments to you in time for Tuesday's meeting. I've also been able to discuss the summary below with my neighbours, that's the summary Claire read out, who all wrote letters of objection initially. They are happy to allow me to include their names in support of the additional comments. They are, these are Mrs. Grace Westercott of Seven Millside Way, Mrs. Rachel Lofthouse of Eight Millside Way, Mrs. Helen Kay of Nine Millside Way, and Mrs. Vanessa Nutter of Ten Millside Way. Um, just to say that there does appear to have been an administrative error in terms of the letters were dated the 7th of August, but they actually didn't get sent out till a lot later than that. Hence the Mr. K's concern. Um, as you will see, I allowed Mr. K to basically, and anybody else to basically put comments up to the day of, uh, uh, of the 
decision today. Um, I also spoke to Marcus about the fact that these letters arrive late and obviously it is put on the website as well about the meeting and what's going to be considered. So um, Marcus said that we, we had covered our duty in terms of notification on that. But as I said, I tried to be as helpful as possible in allowing them extra time. Right. Marcus, have you any, any comments? Yeah, 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 we Maria did have a chat and um, obviously it's something we don't want to get into and there's, there's something happened there and we need to look into it so it doesn't happen again, but no prejudice was caused, you know, by Maria kindly allowing him extra time, he was able to speak to his neighbours and get the representations across and which they've been read out now. So, yeah, we just need to look at our practices behind the scenes. So make sure those notifications get out but as i say the, the, it's on the website anyway you know it, it, it's not something which is hidden from them and right. it's uh, yeah so so legally then we're okay to proceed then with this application yeah absolutely as we, yeah. As we stand today okay okay no problem yeah, yeah. yeah. councillor hutchinson I've, I've noticed you've obviously put um your request for it to come to committee which will obviously mean you have a, an interest in this particular item. Um, that will mean, I should imagine, that you will not be able to vote on this item? Um, I don't believe that that's the case if I'm coming to the meeting with an open mind. Um, Willing to hear arguments against the uh, concerns that I've raised. I did question this with a, with a previous uh, with a previous application, that's what the chair, the chair of the time, informed me. But um, you know, I'd be welcome to be re-educated. Yeah, I think with it saying that council audition request the application is referred to planning committee if the recommendation is to permit. Uh, makes the following comment. So, Marcus, could I? Have, I'd, I'd appreciate your comments on that one there as well. How do we stand? Yeah, of course. I think in my view, councillor, is that the, the, there could be a perception of bias. Um, with this because you've obviously, you, 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 I mean, you, you want to come to a committee um, and that could be, if a reasonable person is appraised all the facts, there could be um, an inference there that you, you've got a slightly closed mind to it and that you're looking at it from a negative negative angle. So my, my recommendation is that you, you step out of the meeting. Mm -hmm. But am I still able to ask for some clarifications on the matters which I have, I have questions I've asked, but which haven't been answered. I think you could, pro you could probably but, but, stay... But, but, but not vote. Yeah, I think you could probably stay as a member of the public and would you be allowed to, and probably allowed to have five minutes, but then you would not be able to, to participate in any of the questioning. Uh, am I correct on that one, Marcus? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I can take, avail myself of that opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Right. So with that in mind, so Councillor Hutchinson now is going to step down from this item and become a, a member of the public on this particular item. And are we allowed to give him the five minutes to speak, even though it's not being put in? Allowing people to speak is at your discretion, Chair. At my discretion, right. Well, I'll, I'll give you that five minutes to, to speak then, Councillor Hutchinson. Thank you, Chair. Well, yeah. now, just, just now, could that be? No, when it when it comes down to to that time, yeah. So I think what we'll do now is we'll actually move on to the to the presentation. Then, if that's okay. Yeah, that's it. That's great, Chair. That's that's for me now. I'll share my screen. So, um, yeah, so as I previously mentioned, we've had representations from the public and to our councillors. Uh, the key issues are as set out in the uh, in the officer's report. I think at this point, uh, just one thing to mention is that this application has uh, had, a, had had a decision previously and has been before committee and committee did permit. Uh, the app uh, application expired in 2017 uh, because the developer hadn't implemented it. However, the scheme that is before you is exactly the same as the scheme that came before committee in 2014 uh, when it was permitted. So uh, I'm aware that there are issues uh, that uh, raised concerns 
for uh, the public and councillors. But if uh, we were to go with a different recommendation, I think um, my advice would be that we would have to have um, a very a, a very good reason, and I think it might be difficult to um, pull that to appeal given that there hasn't really been a change in policy, there hasn't been a change in the, in the council's unitary development plan or really in national policy that um, in, of, the office, in officers' opinion would um, change the decision you know, that has previously been made. And in fact, the housing land supply has decreased and there is, as I previously mentioned, the presumption in favour of sustainable development. So this is the um, application site. It is on a junction with Crossley Hill and Farrah Mill Lane. And it's previously undeveloped at the moment. Uh, as you can see from this aerial photo, uh, there are two trees uh, and it's covered in vegetation. So this road is coming from Salter Hebel. You can see from the aerial photographs here, and also some mention about parking on the on the side of the road. You can't really see, there's no obvious parking along the road here. And I know when I visited my site, that visited the site yesterday, there was no obvious evidence of parking um, outside the site. In fact, I was able to park here and vehicles were able to pass. So this is the existing site plan. And the proposal is to construct two detached dwellings. This, we've got number nine Millside Way. I'll show you the photographs. I know there were some um, comments about windows overlooking, but you've got about 12 metres um, distance here, but you'll see from the photos that if there are any windows, they're, they're uh, hidden by a fence on the boundary. So it's considered that the um, space about dwellings would uh, be in accordance with the UDP uh, policy. This is looking at the proposed ground floor. So you can see in more detail here that you've got the you've got a two-car um, carriage and space here to pull off off the highway. And again, two-car carriage here and a, a small drive at the front with space to, to pull off the highway. The gardens are raised um, and it comes with the um, topography site. And you can see there's actually a spiral staircase here to get up to the upper level. There was a mention about the acoustic barrier which environmental health have, have requested and this would go on the on the boundary here. Um, just going back to the aerial photos, uh, with regards to the point about the um, a right of way, there isn't a, a, def a definitive public footpath um, and it's not really clear on this plan actually where there uh, may be a right of way but I think I think they say it's coming from Crossley Hill across to the nursery. So if there is a right of way, it's a private matter uh, and they, they, they need to take that up with the landowner. This is looking at the, the elevation on Farrah Mill Lane. So at this point, you get an, uh, an idea of the, the change in, in level. So you've got Farrah Mill Lane on the bottom and then Crossley Hill going up at the, at the back. So you can see it's changing changing gradient. The proposal is to uh, dig out to create space for the for the dwelling but you would still have areas of raised land which would help in uh, maintaining the stability of the site. It's not all being completely excavated so there would be a, a higher you know land here that would abut the nursery. With regards to stability, although a survey hasn't been submitted and this isn't identified as a uh, potentially unstable land. Um, there is a condition, I think it's condition two, uh, requiring um, further details, primarily to ensure that um, there is no impact on Crossley Hill as a highway. Uh, but this could be amended if uh, members thought necessary to, to address the whole of the site, so this boundary with the nursery. This is um, again, a section. Looking at the site from this is looking at the site from Crossley Hill. This is a, a, a cross section looking to the back of the houses uh, from uh, from Crossley Hill. So you've got this 
area here, uh, uh, this um, staircase here leading up to the garden. You see that windows have been kept to the upper level, so then are uh, mostly kept to the upper level so that they're not. Um, there's not an overbearing impact from the, the gardens themselves. Again, looking at the uh, cross sections, just the tree to be retained. This is just um, some more sections. So you can see the, you know, what the, the difficulty the applicant faces, but it is ultimately down to them to ensure that they. Um, Know that they have a, a stable development and further sections. And then looking at the site again from Farrow Mill Lane. So, this is um, some photos that I took um, yesterday looking at the site. I mean, um, it is overgrown now, but it was overgrown back in 2014 when the first application came in. So there hasn't been a, a significant change over that time, in, in, in my opinion. This is the willow tree that would be lost. But as uh, you'll see from the officer's report, the tree officer doesn't raise any objections. And then we're looking up Crossley Hill to the back of the site. This is the site of you from Farrow Mill Lane, sloping away there. So this is number nine, Millside Way. See that this facing elevation here is blank, and again, looking um, from the site, any windows, I think possibly the window they're referring to maybe in this extension, but you you don't see it from the road. It's obscured by a fence, so it's office's opinion that there won't be an impact on on privacy. And then this is looking at eight and seven mill side way. The distance to the upper floor windows is uh, seventeen and a half meters, I believe. So it, it complies with standards. And it's looking back at Farmer Lane towards the site. Again, no, um, there aren't any cars parked. There wasn't any cars parked there at the time. In fact, to say I, I managed to park and cars could get past. And then this is looking down the Crossley Hill. I think this might be the right of entry that um, is being referred to, but I say that's a private matter that they, um, they will need to take up with the landowner. So, uh, yes, the recommendation is uh, to permit with conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Claire. If we can come back off full screen. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, members, any questions for officers? Councillor Lynn? Yes, thank you very much for your presentation and for all your work on the application. Um, I have to say that looking at it, that looking at the footprint of the two large dwellings that you uh, that, that are, it's envisaged being built here, um, and the relatively small amount of surrounding space in what is, after all, an incredibly constrained site, um, I'd like your assurance that you believe that the amount of amenity space around the premises is is adequate because to me it um i mean there the has been i mean that the, the, the has uh, you know the, it's it although i understand the, the 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 relevance of needing to support sustainable development um when we don't have a five year supply, land supply i also know that that there has been concern about the whole kind of issues about garden grabbing and constrained sites and so on so i'd just like an assurance that it's your view that the um the very tight footprint, really, that I see from the drawings there, um, meets with with recommended uh, recommended proportions and, and dimensions. Thank you. Hi, hey, through you, Chair. Uh, yes, it. I mean, the, the there is a guard, there is space there where um, residents can sit out, and I think it, there's space. It would um, allow space for for you know, children to play, although it's not a, a, a large area, I think it would not have a significant detrimental impact on amenity. Uh, and that, as I say, that's a view that's been taken before by officers and by uh, members of the committee in permitting this development previously. Okay. Any more questions, members? Councillor Lynn? 
Uh, thank you. There's no more questions from other members. Um, I'm actually a bit concerned about the, um, the stability issues which were raised by both of the councillors who, who, who put in representations there. Um, and I suppose I need to declare an interest there because I do know somebody who lives further up Crossley Hill, um, albeit round the corner. Um, and I can remember standing on her driveway when a large crack opened up um, when building was taking place in the house which is kind of like up the road from from where from the site we're talking about so all i'm saying is i'd like some reassurance that that um uh that the conditions and and the need for what you talked about we talked about in the earlier application and the need for um you know ground conditions survey work to be done adequately because as i say i have seen with my own eyes a, you know a large crack and <laughs> arising in, in a driveway as a result of work which was done probably less than 50 yards away. So I would like some reassurance about that as well, please. Thank you. Yeah, again through you, Chair. Um, yeah, condition two, it does require that before development begins, um, there's a report prepared by an appropriately qualified, competent person. Uh, and this is to demonstra should demonstrate measures to safeguard the structural stability of the retaining wall front fronting Crossley Hill. So I'd say that was mainly to do with um, ensuring that the highway is um, adequately protected. Uh, this condition could be amended to the to the overall site if uh, if members thought it was necessary. But yeah, there are safeguards there to uh, ensure that stability is considered um, by the applicant and measures are put in place. Any more questions, members? Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair. You say it's about the traffic at the bottom of Cross Crossley Hill and Arrow Mill Lane. Um, if what about the garden fences on the lower house? Would that not obstruct obstruct a view as you're trying to turn if you're coming down Crossley Hill? It'd be quite dangerous, I would think. It's, it, it's a junction of two or three roads. Sorry, Councillor, just to clarify, so it's when they're coming down Crossley Hill and the fence off. Well, on if, you went, if you went down Crossley Hill and you want to turn onto Harry Mill Lane, you will have a garden fence obstructing your view. No, uh, at this moment, time, there is quite an open view. Onto, onto Farrow Mill Lane, so you can see currently any traffic coming along. At, at this moment in time, the site is, um, is you know, there is there's vegetation on there, it's, it's not maintained and there's no requirement for it to be maintained. It's probably lower and, than the fences though and it's not solid. Uh, from from my, I mean, I can uh, screen share the photographs, but I think from my photograph, you wouldn't have a view, I don't think, from in the car, looking um, across to Farrow Mill Lane, you would have to pull out past the past the end of the site to really have a view um, as existing. But no, it's not, that's not something that highways- That is now. Hmm. Yeah. I was gonna say, is this something that highways can, can comment on? Is it uh, <coughs> something you think? Yes. Yes, Chair, if, uh, if I can comment on that. Yes, sure, yeah, please. So, looking on the plans, that fence is set back <clears throat> somewhere from the uh, from the junction. It's a 20 mile per hour visibility, uh, uh, sorry, 20 mile per hour zone, and the display would only re be required to be 25 metres, and I think that that would be uh, attainable. And okay. The uh, available visibility score. Okay. We lost you again there, Dean, sorry. Sorry about this. Yeah, um, saying that uh, I don't think that the fence would obstruct dangerously the uh, the visibility splay. It's a 20 mile per hour uh, limit and it's 25 meter splay that we would require. Uh, I think that would be attainable. Um, looking at the, the fence, it's set back somewhat from the actual junction itself. Okay, thank you, Dean. Okay, thank you. Claire, did you want to come back in? I was just going to ask if it would be helpful to share the share the picture or share the drawing. Do you want to have another look at that? If Councillor Clark wants to have a look at that, that's not a problem. Yeah. Please, Claire. Yeah. 
There you go. So, it's, so the highway officer has uh, commented that the fence is, is set back from this from this junction point here. So that's where you would come round from Cross Hill to Barrow Lane, and mm. the fence is, is set back there. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any more questions, members to officers? Councillor Lynn? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I think one of the councillors, I think, I'm not sure whether it was Councillor Hutchinson or Councillor Barnes, in their representations um, regarding this application, uh, referred to the, the, the fact that, um, that these are five bedroom, these are two five bedroom houses, each with one reception room. And I think there was mention there, and I've just been looking through the report and I couldn't actually see it being addressed in the officer's report. There was, meant, there was a query raised as to whether actually that's acceptable space-wise in terms of having one reception room for a five bedroom house. Um, and so I think it would be good if that, if, if that and, you know, if, if, all, if the issues raised by the councils could be, could be addressed by the officer. Thank you. Uh, yeah, there is no no limit, no um, policy with regards to how many reception rooms you would have to the number of bedrooms. So there's no policy issue there. Uh, it's not unusual. Um, by reception room, are you meaning the, the lounge area? But oh, yeah, it's not it's not unusual. You would to only have one reception room or lounge or, or five dwellings. Mm. Okay. Right. Okay. No more questions from from members to officers. Okay. Objectors. Do we have any objectors? No. So we'll move on to councillors. So Councillor Hutchinson, um, you've got the usual five minutes. Just bear with us one second. Okay, Councillor Hutchinson, you've got five minutes to speak on this. Thank you, Chair. Um, most of the matters I've uh, mentioned have been uh, mentioned so far, but uh, I would like to reiterate the lack of the geological engineering report to accompany this application. Um, there was one in the, another, there was one that featured in uh, another case that was considered by this committee this afternoon, but there isn't one here, and you've got uh, two stories depth of excavation right next to a highway to a highway and I would like to be sure that uh, there was a very clear demand to have a, a proper geological engineering survey before uh, this go this was given the go-ahead I am surprised that um, anyone who visits the site can see that the blind that there is a blind corner to the north of, the, right at the northern end of this site. Uh, during the rush hours, there is a lot of traffic moving at considerably more than 30 miles an hour going along that lane. Together with the businesses, um, some waste management businesses, some engineering businesses along there that use considerably larger vehicles. But there is a blind corner right adjacent to that and where cars will be pulling out. And yet there's very little, I'm surprised that um, from a safety ground that that's not been made more, uh, that there's been more concern raised. Um, as Councillor Lynn has pointed out, for each of these dwellings, there are five double bedrooms with ensuite facilities. There are concerns that the garages there are not large, wide enough for two cars to park at the same time and for people to actually be able to open, open the doors to get out. So in reality, they, they look to be only able to really accommodate one car. If what is going to happen is that this is going to be turned, these are going to be turned into houses of multiple occupancy, then that would tend to incur a much greater level of car ownership. Um, and parking and parking there along there does very much constrain the safety of those lanes. So, if there was any way of guarding against 
these being subsequently turned into houses of multiple occupancy that would be could, might be very welcome. The gardens on the other side of the road may not be visible from the from the road level, but from the from the bedroom windows of these new of these proposed developments, they will be clearly visible, and there will be a distinct loss of privacy to those to those existing uh, those existing houses. Is there any way of, of, of mitigating that by a requirement for obscure glazing? Um, there will be a much greater, a, a very great loss of um, surface for per water to permeate through the surface here. At the moment, it looks as if it's uh, surface water drainage is relied on through water butts and a permeable surface. Runoff affecting the properties the other side of the road is a very definite concern. You've seen a very nice picture of the willow tree that is due to be due to be lost in this development. Um, even that might not impress the tree officer of the council. It does look. It does add a lot to the to the uh, beauty amenity area. And the final, my final concern is that this is an extremely narrow uh, lane that is heavily used at certain times of the day, and that the extent of the uh, earth moving works and the constrained nature of the site means it's inevitable that there'll be considerable disruption to the traffic, both from the businesses and for the people who are using it as a as a as a as a bypass. This has a to me, this seems to be very, uh, the idea of sustainable development does not really seem to hold here. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Okay, any questions for, for Councillor Hutchinson? Okay, that's a no. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hutchinson. Um, so we have an applicant, sorry, the agent, I think, just bear with us, my emails gone. Chair, we have no agent for this application. It was just Councillor Barnes' statement to be read out, which I believe has already been done. Right, okay. Right, fantastic. So we can move on then to uh, any comments, members? Any comments and proposals? Maria? Sorry, I, obviously I just need to reiterate that there was a previous approval on this site for the exactly the same scheme. And I just sort of need to make that clear because we'd have to, if we were now looking to refuse, we'd have to assess what is materially different. And as Claire has already alluded to, a lot of the policies we work within are exactly the same now. So I just wanted to make that point before you started your discussion. Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor Baines. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I was going to make a, a similar comment to Maria, um, and I, I think that we, because of the decision in uh, 2014, um, we've got really, we have no choice but to uh, accept this application because it is exactly the same application. And I think we would be heading for. Um, Possible issues um, if, if we refuse and possibly increase costs. Okay. Uh, recommendation. Sorry, thank you. Sorry, Council. Sorry, I was interrupting them. Sorry. No, I just move officers' recommendations. <coughs> Councillor Clark. And then Councillor. Again, Chair. Is there any way that we can defer this um, decision? until there is a stability survey, a, a very uh, robust survey. It has been mentioned over the last seven years in the application for um, permission to build these houses, and, and we haven't got one yet. So I, I, I would put that as an amendment. Uh, can, we, can we defer it? I think that was probably a question to the solicitor. Yeah. Claire, do you want to come in on this one? And then... Uh, yeah, 
obviously the decision you would I think, believe would be for, for members to make, but I would um, just advise that the applicant also has available them to uh, the option to appeal for non-determination. So if it was deferred, they could appeal. And again, um, I think the inspector would question why it had permission with a condition previously, but now uh, we feel it necessary to, do, necessary to defer. Thank you. Can, can I just come back though and say that it has been aware of the need for a stability survey. Oh, for seven years, he's been aware of that. So why is it not in this application? And and so I don't think, until we get that, you can permit any development on the time. Mm. Yeah, go on, Claire. Um, I, I mean, I can't speak for the applicant. I don't know, you know why he hasn't moved forward with this application and, or even why he didn't implement it. But the decision that we are making is um, it's not. It's not based on what the applicant should have done. Or it's you know, would would we permit this? Give this permission with a condition, and we have previously. So mm -hmm. if we were to defer it, as say they've got the option to appeal for non determination, okay. that may well be an issue. Maria, I think you're indicating to come in there as well. Yeah, uh, just to um, and Claire's already mentioned this. Obviously, we have got condition two, which is before development begins, a report prepared by appropriately qualified, competent person demonstrating measures to safeguard the structural stability. Um, and Claire suggested that we do that for the whole site rather than just the retaining wall. So members yeah. may wish that we just change the, the the wording of that condition slightly right okay so that's going to be added into that condition it's just a change of that condition yeah okay yeah. marcus did you want to come in at one point i think you were indicating yeah really i mean i think claire's i mean the question to me was can can you defer it for for the survey or you can, if you think it's important for your decision, but you've got to go on the basis of the risk to that. And the risk here is that previously, there is a condition which controls the development. It's attached to the permission. It satisfies the test. It's reasonable. It's enforceable. It's related to the development. Um, so it, it does the the job. Um, and, um, and like Claire says, it, 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 that's how we proceeded before. Um, and um, they do have the opportunity to, to, to appeal uh, for no determination and i'm not sure that um for want of that survey is, is is i mean there might be other reasons you're obviously going to have a date, debate about that and, and vote but um it, it, it would be it, my view is that it'd be a difficult ground solely to, to defend an appeal on okay thank you councillor curtin yeah thank you chair um no listen into all what's been said and i quite fully agree with what councillor burns has said so i'll be quite happy to second councillor Baines's uh, proposal. Okay, thank you. So we have a we only have a proposal on the table to go with officers' recommendations to permit with the conditions and the alteration in the wording to the conditions as well. Uh, yeah. Chair, I you've also got. I think Councillor uh, Clark she she proposed uh, uh, an amendment to the an amendment to defer. Right, I, I think I need to be seconded. Yeah. Okay, so we've got an amendment to defer. Do we have a seconder on that? Is that you, Councillor Lynn? Yes, and I need to vote on that. Okay, so we have. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to second um, Councillor Clark's recommendation. Thank you. Right, okay. So um, we have one to permit, one to defer, and we've no other councillors present. So this means obviously my vote's needed at this particular point. Um, I'm going to go with... I'm off. correct, don't we have to vote on the amendment first? We have to vote on the amendment first. The amendment to defer first, please. Yeah, right. we need to take the amendment first, uh, Chair. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. So you Thank vote you. on that first. Thank you. So those in favour of the amendment to, to defer. defer? One, two. Two, okay. Okay. Those against the amendment is that those against the amendment to defer? Two. Yeah. Okay. So now we'll go back to the original proposal yeah. of the officer's recommendations to permit. Uh, sorry, Chad. Isn't that um, 
it's in a draw to do two. It is, it is, yeah. It is, yeah. The chair has a casting vote, am I correct? Unless chair wants to use his casting yeah. vote. Yeah. And the chair, the chair will use the casting vote on this. And I think really because this has already been here in 2014 and past, I'm, I'm happy with what's been put in front of us today uh, with the uh, the conditions as well. So I'm going to go with officers recommending. Yeah, but chair, chair, if I may come in there, that 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 last that last vote there for the amendment was two two. So you know, are you saying that you you're putting your vote in against or for? Oh, it? sorry, yeah. So my my vote's against the deferring. Deferring, yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry, I'm new to sitting in the chair roll and planning. <laughs> Now we go back. To now the, we need to go to the substantive no, motion. The substantive motion, which is the original um, condition of accepting officers' recommendations to permit. So, but is that not also with an amended? With, it's it with, is yes. It's yeah. with the amended conditions, isn't it? Yeah. It is yeah. yes. Yeah. With amended conditions, okay. So that's Councillor Baines, Councillor Curtin. And I also Hang on, can we take a vote on it, Chair? Yeah, can we vote on that? <laughs> those, those in favour? One, two. Right. Three. Chair, where do you, and I, I'm, do you I'm, sit on this one? I'm in favour of this, yeah. Sorry. So can't you can't see your hand, clear, Chair. Then. So we've got right. three, <laughs> three in favour of the substantive motion to permit with the existing conditions plus yes. a change in condition two. Yes. Yes. Is that correct? That's is that correct. okay, Marcus? Yeah. Okay. Right, okay. And those against? Two, okay. So that's that's carried to go with officers' recommendations to permit. Yep. Yes. 